continuity from the last movie starting off with a fantasy sequence, but since we picked up Jesse and Bullseye in the last movie, it's a western instead of space. And Woody really leans into his divine purpose by hiding his face behind his hat like a real cowboy. Didn't have Mrs. Potato Head throws down with Woody in a badass martial arts fight scene on my checklist. Shoulda. Also, Jude asked me if the potatoes were pirates, which made me realize we really stigmatized eye patches in our media, but then I realized the bandits are basically pirates of the land, and thanks for coming to my TED Talk. The backgrounds here are really killing it. Is this what Andy's imagination looks like? What's wrong with my brain? Oh no, the orphans! <laughs> They're hair in the wind. They're kids, and all with eye patches too. And this is straight out of a child's imagination. Cowboys, potatoes, Barbie convertible, all are welcome second Toy Story in a row to seemingly kill off one of our heroes. But if you're gonna play with trains in a bridge, you're gonna crash that train, at least that's been my experience. 99% of the reason we build anything is just to smash it. No! I love how much Jesse and Bullseye are selling it. Taking pride in your craft. Who's that, Captain Marvel? Oh, it's Buzz. Glad I can catch the train! Reach for the sky! Classic Woody, even a literal representation of Andy using the pull cord during play. Great hero shot. I brought my attack dog with a built-in force field. Oh. I brought my dinosaur who eats force field dog. Accurate. Jude always seems to have the exact dinosaur defeat whatever I throw at him, or, or bring to the fight. I don't throw things at my son, mostly. Uh, more importantly, these are the exact lines from Toy Story, and we're seeing them come to life. I brought my attack dog with a built-in force field. Well, I brought my dinosaur who eats force field dog. Then all with J.P. Rexy's classic roar. <laughs> Movies don't have enough shockwave producing yodeling, but they are really up in the ante for openings here. Four has a lot to live up to. I'm thinking some kind of garbage having an existential crisis. Yeah, that'll work. This is both smart and awful, because those monkey toys were literally sold in little plastic barrels, but also barrel bombs exist and are pretty awful. And I mean, bold move to go full mushroom cloud, more clever grimness. It's also sort of unsettling. Is this like a Godzilla thing? Commentary on nuclear arms. You can't hug your monkeys with nuclear arms. <laughs> Love that hard cut. The world of the imagination is so much more powerful than the real world. Just ask Calvin. And Potato's eye patch is just a missing eye. <laughs> Look, it can go either way. This can end in fun or blood and tears. You never know. But I will say that this is a possible outcome. Come on, say happy birthday to Molly. You got a friend in me. Song works literally every time. Buzz propaganda in the background? I guess as long as they don't make some space movie about the life. What's that? Oh, it's, it's the very reason we're doing this. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Begins. Wilhelm scream in the movie Andy's watching. Okay, let's narrow it down to the movies it could be. Got it, Return of the Jedi. Also, hey, Michael Caine car. A friendship will never die. Never. He said never die. Why are we cutting to black? Oh, this isn't gonna be a happy movie, is it? Why, why, why would I mind squeeze, squeezing next to you? <clears throat> Buzz, bro, it's time to pull the trigger. Oof, that reveal that he's not a kid anymore? Nope, I'm not sure I can do this. Then again, fortunately for me, my kids will never grow up, and that is a very healthy way to think about life. Leave me alone. Go away, shut up. He held me. He actually held me. Goodness, it's got to be the saddest line I've ever heard. When the trash bags come out, we army guys are the first to go. They're not wrong, but they're also great BB target practice, so yeah, you should probably go. Yeah, we've lost friends along the way. Etch and Bo Peep. I'd say, don't worry, there's another movie, but I'm still unsure how I feel about all that, so... It's like a... It's like a future reference. It's like a reference to the future. Andy's gonna tuck us in the attic. It'll be safe and warm. And we'll all be together. Woody Buzz 2024. I mean, they sound like politicians. Cause nobody believes that. And he'll play with us then, right? We'll always be there for him. Sheesh, that was not a yes. Superb politician. Poor Barbie. I get the Corvette. Opportunism. Boy, that's not really a good thing to be seeing the silver linings. <laughs> Honestly, same. So where's our movie called Pride? Yeah, seriously, that's Woody's last name, I promise. I can't breathe! Oh, this can't be happening! How do you know? We're being abandoned! But this is literal torture for Jessie since she already had trauma responses just thinking about being put in storage way back in Toy Story 2. Andy! Good and honest communication within the family leads to healthy relationships and also no toys being sent to a fiery incinerator. Buster! Come here, boy, come here! Oh, wow, that, uh, hits different as an adult. Nope, I'm, just, you know, I'm gonna leave that one there. He's a good boy who deserves all the bats. Wait, I was 25 when this movie came out. Good for you, Sid. I bet you get all the parts you could need to build whatever it is you want now. Woody's gangly running will never not be a win. Fellas, I know what to do. Love the adventurous take on When She Loved Me. Although, now that I'm thinking about that song, yeah, yep, yep, I'm crying. Look 
Look how big you are! Aw, they're really nailing how some littles are around new adults. I see you, Shy Bonnie. Careful. These toys might be jealous of new arrival. You know, I like Pragmatic Buzz. He's really on his game so far. Well, hello there! Oh, hey, a nice older gentleman who appears to be the leader of this group. I bet he's not a secret baddie! Boxcar Lightning McQueen. We come and pull. <laughs> First thing you gotta know about me is that I can physically dominate you in a way you did not consent to. He can't hurt you no more. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now no, let's no, no. get. See what I mean? I know his type. I mean, Ken's dressed like every bad guy in every 80s romantic comedy. It's really on us for not picking up on that. Speaking of things that are more decades older than you realize. Dreamweaver, huh? It's almost as if he's watching Crucial Taunt play live for the first time, and if you get that reference, congrats, you're old as crap too. Also flirting. Lotso plays it off like his limp is the reason for using the sight truck, but it's much closer to the way Deacon rides around the D's. Barbie, come with me. Live in my dream house. I know it's crazy. When I look at you, I feel like we were made for each other. I mean, in every technical sense of the words, they were, but still, Red Flag City. Anyone who wants to join me is welcome. Come on, Buzz. And see, now, this scene does nothing for me emotionally, as I have never drifted apart from friends whom I once was very close with. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Oof, can't take that back, bud. As always, these toys are more human than the human characters. Such a cool shot. And fun fact, they did that in camera. It always amazes me when we get amazing physical comedy and animation, because, you know, it's, it's not technically physical unless you include the animators dancing around, which I guess I do, but either way, great physical comedy. I never get tired of the spy movie sequences these movies have. It always lends to the idea that anytime you notice something weird or not where you left it, it was Ninja Toys messing with you. Some of you youngsters might not know this, but there was once a movie called Mission Impossible. That was it, the whole title, no protocols or fallouts or nations, just Mission Impossible. And that's what this is a reference to. And this bit arguably worked a lot better than the bit I'm doing right now. MCU's getting Earth 726? Saw it here first, folks. Yeah, it's pretty accurate, but I love the added horror vibes. Chaotic piano, shaky cam, attack on Titan close-ups. Move over, Mr. Prickle Pants. We have a guest. Mr. Prickle Pants is the best name ever, and from this day forward, it is what I will call every American president. Hey, hello. Hi, excuse me. The guy's just asking a question. Well, excuse me. I'm trying to stay in character. Speaking of taking pride in your craft, you'd expect nothing less from Bond James Bond, or Simon Skinner if you prefer. I don't know where I am. We're either in a cafe in Paris or a coffee shop in New Jersey. Louise without her pink bunny ears? Huh, must be her friend or neighbor depending on your English translation. Also, Jude has this exact Totoro stuffy except he has the one with a leaf over its head and he sleeps with it every night even though when he was around two, he used to close his eyes during the scene when May first meets Totoro. Also, when the soot sprites scurry out of the attic, that's how I know he's not quite ready for Spirited Away. Was that too much? This is getting claimed now. I love that you can tell when people with kids made the movie. Stickers stuck to hardwood floors? Check. Marker marks on the floors and walls? Check. Any toys with detachable parts detached? Check. Also, seeing that everyone has been drawn on made me realize that Big Baby has drawings all over him, so did they force him to go in the caterpillar room because he's just a simple-minded enforcer? Or are these prison tats? Okay, based on previous movies, we just saw something immensely disturbing, which can definitely add to the horror vibe if you let it. Fenster Schneckler 380, finest child-proof lock in the world. Ha, <laughs> he knows about locks because he's always the bad guy. Just a whole bunch of teamwork to pull off another amazing buzz acrobatic routine. The sneaky spy pace and lighting contrast from the vending machine in the scene are just killing it. I gotta get home. You guys have a map? We're on it, cowboy. You know, after last movie, it's nice to see another group of toys that are immediately willing to help Woody get home. Forky arm restraints. This isn't how we treat our guests. If they owe my shorts. I kind of feel like he's cursing. By the way, I'm definitely using that now. No, no, no! Looking back, I think we all agree this is one of the, if not the most traumatizing Toy Story movies, but seeing this for the first time as a kid must be rough. But also, hey, by and large batteries. Oh man, the headlight from the truck behind Lotso, the gangster movie feels. And I deserve more respect! If she can see with her detached eye, surely she could talk with her detached mouth or bite? Just gotta think outside the potato, Mrs. P. You're in the custody of the Galactic Alliance. Sir, Galactic Alliance? Oh boy. <laughs> A lesser movie would pretend like this hasn't happened before. Not Porky. Where do you think you're going? Back to the Pride Lands? To Mufasa? We're your friends! Spare me your lies, Temptress. Haha, -ha, true feelings come out when brainwashed. And I'm immune to your bewitching good looks. Barbie, wait! Don't touch me! We're through! Give me nice scarf back! Is there a solidarity, Barbie? Because after this, there definitely should be. Any prisoner talks back, spends the night. In the box, we get it. Jesse isn't taking any of Buzz Lightfear's crap, and I love it. Any doubt I had got pounded out of me at the Academy. 
uh, what's Light Years rating? You know, because of the authoritarianism. Who's Velocistar 237? Oh. Man, the Shining and Toy Story connections are just too many to ignore. Everyone wants to hug Totoro. Any of you guys ever get to Sunnyside Daycare? You tell him Woody made it home. How'd you escape? Well, you see, Woody's essentially the Captain John Patrick Mason of toys, and with no Nick Cage this time. Me and him, we had the same kid. Seriously, this film gets so grim, and casting Bud Lucky, Rick Decker slash Eeyore perfectly captures the right mood. Especially given what he sounded like before the turn. No, she only replaced you. She replaced all of us. Didn't she? Yeah, you want to give him a pass, but then you realize that gaslighting has been in his DNA from day one. Ha! Almost a secret Pizza Planet truck cameo. Woody's roundup gang stories of abandonment are so tragic they make you want to cry, but here, it's still tragic but done with a horror lens. It's great. More horror movies for kids? I mean, that, that sounds right. And you thought the Deacon comparison was a stretch. Nothing but sand and a couple of Lincoln Logs. Hey, I don't think those were Lincoln Logs. Were they candy bars? I don't think we've ever given Woody enough credit for his parkour skills. <laughs> so toys can't feel pain, but I think there's a lesson for kids in here about not trashing your stuff or anyone else's stuff. Jude uh, does, he didn't get that message. They've cracked down hard since you left. You and your friends ain't ever getting out of here now. The fact that this is Chatter Telephone's voice and accent is perfection. This is an odd thing, but whenever you like a voice you don't recognize in a Pixar movie, you'll find out that it's probably someone from the art department on other Pixar and animated movies, which just warms the heart. Poor fella. Trash truck comes at dawn. Trauma-inducing scene shadowing. The whole prison break trope is done perfectly, and while we're zoomed in on this snitch's face, look at the monitors reflected in his eyes, the pulled threads all around his face. His pupils are cameras. <laughs> really leaning into the horror movie feels. Jesse's right, Woody. She was wrong. I really do appreciate that Mr. Potato Head is always gonna be a jerk. Honesty. Potato Head. Hey, hey, tuberous root man. Oh, that's good stuff, a buzz burn. You're a puss with legs. Ow! But also, you're really gonna cast Don Rickles and not have him lay into someone? Classic Rickles Potato. That's Mr. Potato Head to you, Smoothie. And that's probably a waxed body hair joke, but I choose to believe he just called Ken Smoothbrained. The lighting, the pacing, and you see this is another Mission Impossible- Oh my god, why? Well, I guess it's fun for kids when they get to see their parents scream in a jump scare. Self-confidence? Maybe you overconfidence, but still confidence. <laughs> Love that the still stuck in the Matrix on demo setting buzz toys never put it together that the laser isn't. See, I was right before. Mrs. P just needs to expand her tortilla. Or like, think more like a Cronenberg. You can't make me talk. You can't. But I'd like to see you try. More flirting? Okay, come on. Jesse's the coolest toy, right? We all think that. Oh, Barbie! Those were vintage! <laughs> okay. right, Barbie is stone cold and I love it. I don't know why this couldn't wait until morning, Ken, but here you go. Bing bong! And since Ken wears a new outfit in every scene and has this closet full of clothes, it's entirely believable he'd want to wear a spacesuit occasionally. Seriously, was the birds considered horror? Because this is. Crows have eyes three, am I right? No one can hear you. What? He said no one can just... Got him with the classic bit. Nunca había visto la verdadera belleza hasta esta noche. <laughs> so Buzz seems less like Spanish-speaking Buzz and more like, I don't know, Spanish soap opera Buzz? Odd and probably offensive setting to have on your Space Ranger toy, but hey, whatever gets him finally telling Jesse his truth. And also, at least they stuck to one type of Spanish, as in Castilian Spanish from Spain, and kept his movements and accent as accurate as possible. Larry? Bullseye's just always cute. But that's it. He's a Jude win and a wife win. When Bender gets stuck to a magnet, his true desire to be a folk singer comes out, and I'm just gonna say that Buzz's Spanish mode makes his love of Spanish dance come out. That said, it would totally work on me. I'm a sucker for dope moves. You know, sometimes Woody really is a good leader. Look who's back. Wow, those are some terrifying movements. Makes me miss Hank. I've been here years. They'll never break me. They broke me. Yikes. I mean, nice double entendre with broke, and I guess his mouth was just cosmetic, but yikes. Authority should derive from the consent of the governed, not from the threat of force. Gnome Barbsky just became my favorite character in this film. But everyone loves to say you couldn't make this movie today, and who? Boy, could you imagine the outcry if Pixar dropped some John Locke in a movie this year. It's Lotto! He's made us into a pyramid, and he put himself on top! Way to go, Batman. I mean, you got a lot of time left on your journey towards Black Block Ken, but still, way to go. What, you didn't know Michael Keaton was Ken? Try on hearing it now. You don't talk to Lotto till we say you can. You want your mommy back? She never loved you! For real, if I had to describe Lotto in one word, it would be gaslighting. I remember the first time I saw this, I thought, whoa, that's intense, Vader finally did it. But that's only because I had no idea the absolute horror show that was coming. Oh, 
Self-sacrifice volcano style. All right, into the landfill. Scary stuff, surely this is where the terror ends. Even after escaping a cult or a particularly indoctrinating religion, it can still be really hard for people to let go. Okay, dozered onto a conveyor of unknown destination. Rough, but I know the scaries are coming to an end soon. Well, sure, the conveyor leads to one of those nightmare shredders, but that's bound to be the last obstacle. Saving Natsu, I mean Matsu. Okay, I don't know why these people hate trash so much that they feel they need to torture it to death. Honestly, can't believe this isn't a kid's movie. I mean, I was raised on the Brave Little Toaster, so nothing can hurt me anymore. I've seen some things. Where's your kid now, Sheriff? Oh, right, forgot about the human, or toy element. Fantastic. I guess it's character continuity for Lotso, but it's a testament to how good this movie is that I still audibly gasped when rewatching it for this video. He's a real special kind of bad, not the badass kind, the umbridge dragged off into the forest kind, or melting Nazis and raiders kind. So again, I was 25 when I saw this movie, and while I was like 95% sure Toy Story 3 wouldn't end with all the toys burning and melting on screen, this scene still massively affected me. The fact that they all accept death and hold hands is just... It's something. And for a kid's movie? At this point, we're conditioned to assume Pixar is gonna hit us in the emotional bits. But this is real, contemplating your life, mortality, and existence. Not to mention, this would be an awful death. And they realize there's nothing they can do, so they choose to stop struggling and calm themselves for their last moments to stay together and accept their fate as fate. <laughs> and ever the optimist, Woody is the last to give in. the score clanging away like they're headed to meet the Terminator. What a scene. Ah, I take it all back. Religion will save us. Ah, I take that back. Aliens will save us. Hashtag give Andrew aliens. Aw, and see, all it took was a little stereotyping glitch for these two to finally make that love connection. Honestly, Lotso gets off light. He's got companionship. These guys seem pretty happy. He gets to see the world, and it's pretty clear the driver is stoked he found him. Actually, can I be strapped to the front of a big rig? Wait, so did they just threaten Sid again? After presumably years of therapy, and the same toys show up and force him to drive them home? You guys really owe him one. You'll be okay in the attic? I know about Buzz's Spanish mode. My what? So is the Spanish mode like Buzz's innie, or is it more of a Mark and Steven thing? Sure, sure. Well, we haven't gone through enough yet. Pile it on. Mom? <laughs> Correct reaction from Bonnie. Also, Bonnie's outfit is an A+. Plus. Always a win, sorry, not sorry. There's a snake in my boot. <laughs> Always a win. And that instinctual recoil to keep Woody for himself. Woody can represent a lot of different things for kids transitioning into adulthood, but what matters here is the sacrifice that Andy is willing to make, realizing it's not all about him. And while from the movie's perspective, it works out really well that Woody gets to be with his friends and you can project that benevolence onto Andy, all he knows is that Bonnie will get more enjoyment out of Woody than he can. Such a solid bookend to this growing up trilogy. Now Woody, he's been my pal for as long as I can remember. But the thing that makes Woody special is he'll never give up on you. He'll be there for you, no matter what. What really makes this whole scene work is that the toys can hear everything Andy is saying. They get to know he loves them and wants someone to take care of them. And then they all get to be played with by Andy one last time. What more can we or they ask for? The fact that they aren't all crying right now is nuts because I'm a mess. Yeah, dude, they've been alive this entire time. You really never talked to Sid about this? Poor Andy. You toys! Look, I'm as happy to see these toys get a second chance as anybody, but Stretchy Shenzi and a few others committed some war crimes here. Big Baby gets a pass, though. He was a victim. Look at him just staring up at the night sky. Randy Newman sliding in at the end with, once again, a song that seems happy on the surface, but in the context of the movie is kinda sad. And even more sad when you think about an old man singing alone at his piano. But still, Randy Newman. Randy Newman. I love that Barbie, possibly with Ken's help, turns Sunnyside into a commune, where they probably take turns to act as a sort of executive officer for the week, but of course all the decisions of that officer would have to be ratified at a special bi-weekly meeting by a simple majority in the case of purely internal affairs, but by a two-thirds majority in the case of more major ones. Probably. Finally we get that toothy grin. Look at that forest spirit. Is this the Gypsy Kings covering You Got a Friend in Me? Love it. 11 out of 10. And a traditional Paso Doble? All right, they put in the work. 
You know, Lassiter and Stanton and everyone involved in the creative process had an opportunity to just keep making basically the same movie with palette swap adventures while aging Andy up a year or two or even keeping him the same age between movies. But boy, howdy did they not take the easy way out. I remember that first moment of seeing teenage Andy and getting that sinking feeling because no matter what happens, things are not the same. And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but change terrifies me. My kids are getting older, my dog is getting older, and even me. Apparently I am not immune to the march of time. And generally speaking, I like when my kids' movies don't make me think about all that. But Pixar said, nah, you're gonna think about it and you're gonna like it. It's like one of the main things we do. Feel it. You feel it deep. And so I did. Do we ever think that toys are really going to be burned like trash? No, obviously. I wasn't scared at all, obviously. And honestly, even Jude didn't seem all that worried, but if this movie is about anything, it's about accepting change as it comes. And hot dang, getting dragged to a fiery death is a pretty significant change to welcome with a plum. And it's actually a decent fake out for what has to happen because Andy is too old for our heroes. So it works both as a painful change for the toys as well as the humans. Obviously, there's a Toy Story 4, and there'll probably be more even after Lightyear, but 1, 2, and 3 stand on their own as a great trilogy. Following Andy from childhood to young adulthood, he ends his story as he passes the toys off to Bonnie. And Andy's even voiced by the same actor in every movie. It probably doesn't matter how old you are, I think we all recognize the feeling of growing older, but it often happens slow enough that the pain of change is mild. Years had passed before I realized I was falling behind on video games. But on occasion, we're confronted with a moment where it all becomes tangible. Graduations and weddings will do it, your kids leaving for college, or even more mundane things like retiring an infant car seat, heck, first haircuts, or even giving away your toys. By the way, I promised myself as a kid I'd never stop playing video games, so I've just been taking an extended break, and just last month, after my MGS video, I started playing Breath of the Wild for the first time, so there's still hope, 12-year-old Lee, don't give up on me. Anyway, I think they did some interesting stuff with the characters here. Woody is certainly hurt and angry with his friends for staying at Sunnyside, but he doesn't even remotely hesitate to attempt to save them when he realizes they're in danger. They really do have a friend in Woody. And then Barbie's larger role in basedness is a welcome surprise. Her refusal to be complicit in many ways is a catalyst for the fall of the Lotso crew. She even has a positive effect on Ken, and despite him being a total Ken, I honestly like that he has a change of heart in the end. And hey, Buzz and Jesse finally profess their desire to dance together. It takes the whole film, but I'm glad there's finally some actual romance between them. The Potato Heads ended up being genuinely crucial to the plot. I mean, Mr. Tortilla Head is just a genius sequence all around. Also, there's something great about the aliens being a literal deus ex machina at the end. I don't even know why I like it so much. These throwaway prize toys from a pizza place are why all our toys don't get incinerated. It works. And Lotso is such a great villain. I know the comparison to the newly introduced nice toy that turns out to be secretly evil with Stinky Pete is there, but that's basically where the comparisons end. I mean, Lotso runs a freaking mob. And Ned Beatty, the guy from Deliverance, finally getting his revenge? Weird reference for a kid's movie. We already mentioned Waterworld, they know I'm a weirdo by now. And Lotso's backstory is tragic, but it's also a reminder of what not dealing with your own trauma can do. And again, it's a movie about toys, so I don't want to get too deep because I'm not sure Lotso had a lot of avenues to successfully deal with his pain, but the whole I've been through some crap so now everyone else has to as well mentality is wrong and honestly counterproductive. It's like the people who say kids these days are so weak. Why is everyone complaining about bullying? They just need to toughen up. I got bullied and I'm fine. You're not fine. Nobody thinks you're fine. You're our incredibly aggro coworker who everyone avoids because you're constantly saying inappropriate things and trying to let everyone know how tough you are, Mike. Sorry, Mike was a lot. Well, I drank from the hose and I'm alive. You have lead poisoning, Mike. I also like the continual comeuppance that bad toys seem to get. In two, Stinky Pete gets played with, and in three, as we mentioned, Lotso gets to travel with other toys, and his human has a genuine soft spot for him. It's not the same as having Bonnie, but he was terrible, so he should be thanking his lucky stars. If nothing else, this movie will make us feel a little worse for what garbage has to endure. That was a message, right? I think so. One more to go. Next week, as far as firearms go, this one isn't at the bottom. Porkchop! Got a problem with cartoons? <laughs> <laughs>